last few side quests for Dragon Heist, and then we will start uh, Mad Mage whenever you guys are ready. Um, and the last one you guys did is you, uh, both guilds actually, Harpers and um, well, two of them, Emerald Enclave asked you guys to track down some doppelgangers. Harpers wanted you to recruit some, Emerald Enclave wanted you guys to stop some, and you guys did both successfully with the help of Bonnie, the uh, commander at Yawning Portal. And I believe that's where you guys left off, or did you guys go back home after? Or did we just stop right after you guys finished the battle? I can't remember. I know we were running low on time. We, we finished off those four and talked to Bonnie at the end, and I think that was where we left off. Okay. I think. I could be wrong. Yeah, I was, didn't think you guys had went uh, back home yet. But um, So did you guys want to head back, or did you guys want to... Uh, carry on. Do we uh, want to do that long rest or anything, or how are we on time? I don't think we had any specific time constraints about, uh, you know, getting to the uh, to the next part. We did the Harpers and the Emerald Enclave one, but we didn't do the Gauntlet one. Is that what it was? Yeah, you guys have uh, the level 4 ones for Order of the Gauntlet left, so for Sokno's Guild, and then you guys uh, each have one for level 5. As well. no. uh, we might as well probably go back then uh, take a rest because I think we, we got a little bit beat up. Let me. See. I know I took some hits. Yeah, I got some of my uh, spell slots burnt. Okay. Oh, I, I keep forgetting that I can't as a player see the party window, or like the one that shows health and everything. But yeah, I've I took some uh, took a beating so. Uh, I also want to give you some supplies or gold for uh, maybe some more ammunition if you can make a few more uh, rounds. Yeah. Um, I, 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 the cost-wise, I don't know if we ever decided or figured out a cost. Did we? Just... I, we I knew it wasn't going to be too much because you're basically just melting down some lead or whatever just for basic bullets. So. Yeah, that's what I thought. It's going to cost you guys too much. I mean, what? Coppers each, probably. Probably not even a silver each. Huh? So. Something happened on my sheet here because my now I have uh, six copies of my spear. Uh, actually, one of them is thrown, so five copies. Uh, so I think, remember when it disappeared last week, uh, or well, three weeks ago, um, and I had put a new one back. It looks like the original's back, so I'm just going to delete the others, but I hopefully it doesn't, you know, the correct one doesn't disappear afterwards. So, um, but yeah, they, they, I mean, they were not a significant amount of money, especially not considering um, uh, the, the payout from. Um, Jarl Axel. Yeah, so I don't think that would cost you guys much. As long as you don't charge Sako too much in labor costs, I don't think it'll uh, uh, lighten his pockets too much. So. Nah. But yeah, I'll make him some more. Uh, how much do you have and how much do you need, Sako? Uh, it shows I have three ammo. I've fired one of them. Okay. I'll just make... Uh, I mean, are you, you're you having both of them preloaded, right? Because you can't just fire, fire. You have to actually reload each one. Uh, which yeah, is... I think it's three per... Uh, I think there's, you can only have, like, three in the magazine. I don't think there's even a magazine, is there? It's probably a flintlock. It's probably, like, you load it and then fire it. I don't think there's a magazine at all. I just see three sure. pips. I don't know what that means. Yeah, that's just total number of bullets you have. Yeah. So basically, the, the the loading would, at least for crossbows, loading takes an uh, So if we're treating them similar to crossbows, uh, unless you have the crossbow expert feat, uh, loading takes an action, which means that basically you would have both pistols preloaded. You could fire each of them once, and then you'd have to take an action to reload them. Which yeah, you could do out of combat, of course. Yeah, exactly. Perfect. So, the idea being you could have two big hits, you know, ready to go at the beginning of any fight, and then if you needed to reuse them in the middle of the fight, you'd have to take one of your turns to reload them, unless you took the crossbow expert feat, which lets you reload them without taking it. Yeah, I don't think that ammo would weigh too much either, so you could probably carry a few on you if you wanted to. So I'll kind of just stock up. It's up to you. Yeah, I have about three, so maybe just like another three or something. I mean, time-wise, if it's just melted down lead, that's gonna not not gonna take any significant amount of time. I'll just make like a dozen or twenty. Just make it twenty for simplicity's sake. That works. Okay. And but those keeping gold for that. Oh, for it's, it's for, for lead. That's that's nothing. It wouldn't it wouldn't cost hardly anything. Um, I'll just you know I'll mark off a gold out of my inventory, but it's not not a any that's not anything to worry about. Uh, but the 
um, as long as it's okay with Ben. Um, those won't be reusable, though. So once you fire it, you can't, like, basically you'll have to get new bullets. It won't be the same as, like, picking up an arrow or, or a bolt that you've shot. Yeah, they're gone. Yeah. Yeah, little small round balls of lead are probably not going to be more trouble to dig it out of something or somebody than it would just to use a new one. So. Yeah, and they'd be all misshapen and everything, too. Yeah. yeah. It's not super strong bullets here back to fucking up. But yeah, I don't think it'd be hard for you guys to find that, and I'm sure it's not hard for you guys to, you know, find any lead either. Go to the blacksmith, probably be happy to fucking say you guys as much as you need. So, or not much, compared to how much money you guys have. Yeah. All right, I marked off a gold. Okay. All right, so where are we at? So, do I just change the ammo number to 20 on the pistol there, and then it'll rip it on him? There we go. Yeah, he can actually do it himself as well, but yeah. At 20 now. So now you got plenty of bullets on Nice. Alright, guys. And Rename him Moz. <laughs> and uh, when you guys are back relaxing, oh, not long rest on you guys. And you guys uh, get you're used to this now, but a visitor that you guys have uh, met before from the Order of the Gauntlet. And they have a request of you guys. Um, where rats are actually, which you're familiar with already, have been causing problems out uh, at an inn in the field ward. And they are asking you guys to go see if you can take care of it. And, and uh, it looks, they assume that they have a connection to the shard shunners because, again, those were known. You guys stopped them before, but they were known where rats causing problems. So you don't actually know if they're shard shunners or not, but that's what they said is that it could possibly be them. But there are uh, a group of where rats causing problems out there. My spear disappeared again, G. Can you okay. just grab grab it? I was trying to fix the. Uh, I had multiple listings of it, so I just deleted the extra, uh, and then it disappeared. The the one that I left disappeared as well. So if you would just drop another uh, refined, uh, uh, so I think it was a plus one spear. I think so. Is the the stat, and I'll just adjust it for the spear master feat. The guards are being robbed every night. Thanks, G. Mm -hmm. Mark it, mark it as identified for me. Terrible guards. Yeah, I mean they're the ones that are supposed to be preventing other people from getting robbed. Uh, if you would have, if we're gonna take a long rest, then uh, apply that to G. Oh yes, thank you. Yeah, they say that, uh, well, they say that they've seen giant rats out there, apparently, yes, harassing the guards at uh, a tavern and inn over there called the End Shift. Uh, it's actually on End Shift Street in the field board. Yep. Okay. Well, I'm ready to go take a look. What do you guys? Yeah. All right. They're good. So you guys head out there, um, going through a uh, nice day, because obviously you guys rest through the night and get up the next day, and uh, Rob makes those bullets for for uh, Eldor in the process of that day. And then you guys get up and head out there. And hang on, sure you guys. Then you guys see the End Shift Tavern, and uh, there's actually, as soon as you guys get close, you actually do hear some ruckus already going on. So. You came at a good time. Okay, coming. Nice. Uh, you don't have anything masty, but did uh, was that one that I gave you? Uh, I'm not. Sh I think this one actually might be one of the. Uh, uh, ones from the DM pack for the Dragon Heist that I didn't end up using for, you know, because it was for like a different route you guys didn't go or whatever kind of thing. I think gotcha. this might have been one from the, the Dragon Heist bundle. Because so. it's, it's a nicer looking map than most of them usually are. Like that looks like one of the Heroic, heroic Maps ones. Yeah, this actually was a um, some map. Trees and bushes look kind of nice. High res kind of. 
Yeah, he's a, he's a good artist. That's the one that I usually buy the maps from. Okay. The tavern looks bigger than ours. <laughs> <laughs> well, ours is four floors, five floors. We can count the the cellar, so we get a little bit of extra space. That's the area that you guys were coming from, so you guys can place yourselves where you want to, but you were coming from that side over that bridge over there. And again, you your fingers are shooting. You're tiny. Ghost is a kitten. House cat. There we go. Wait. And when you guys are heading up that way, you actually hear a few things clanging and breaking, and you hear uh, a guy's voice saying, get the hell out of here. And you do see a few people actually uh, ran out through, as you can see, the, there's a little uh, or alleyway or whatever you want to call it, uh, as you guys can see, which I guess I, doesn't, I didn't mask this, but who cares? Uh, and then the door to the inn is over there. And so, just, you know, in the building, you guys hear crashing and stuff and you see a few people running out through there that, so through the alleyway so you see some people running out okay there. oh uh sako real quick um we i figured i found this out uh during an embers game or before an embers game uh while on the map if you just hold left and right click together and then drag a line It'll drag a, a, a or drag a you know a line automatically across it. If you hold Alt while you do it, it drags a cone. And then if you just double click on the map, it'll erase whatever you've drawn. And if you hold down Control, it'll draw a circle. So basically, you can quick draw without having to go through the menus. You can quick draw lines, cones, circles, etc. And Shift is a square. But just basically right click, uh, double double click rather anywhere else on the map, and it'll erase whatever you've drawn. So it's a pretty pretty quick way of kind of drawing uh, uh, lines and stuff like that. And you could use those for getting That's quick nice. measurements and so on. Yeah, that helps out a lot too. Yeah, it's pretty handy, especially because you can just double you know double click it off of you know somewhere else to erase it. But then it doesn't matter where you click. So it's if it's under something, it won't matter and so on. All right, so they they were screaming and running down that alleyway, G. Uh, yeah, so so you hear clanging and uh, a guy yelling, "Get the hell out of here!" from inside the inn, uh, which is the building that you guys are next to, of course. And then you do see some people running out from that alley, um, it, not exactly like running for their lives, like totally scared, but kind of hurrying out, like yeah, shit's going down. There's a fight going on. We're gonna get the hell out of here. So they were going down that alley and leaving uh, in the opposite direction of where you guys were. I'll, I'll rush towards them and just, uh, uh, you know, yell after them. What's what's? They say uh, we were over there drinking, and there was some uh, halflings came in and stood up and caused a problem. Uh, and then all of a sudden, I looked away for a second and looked back, and now they, there's a, uh, you know, rats standing there where those halflings were. So I guess they weren't actually halflings. I don't know. But I'm getting the hell out of here. Let's go check it out, guys. What do you think? So they were harassing the bartender. Sounds good. And keep your flash bar so it's just in here and then up these stairs i believe this is actually um, you passed a door right there oh okay i, I didn't okay that's that door right there because this right. is a multi-level place but uh, you hear the commotion coming from the floor, so. okay i'll just come in you know come around to the to the front door and look through it's open i assume uh yeah the door is open and you're looking right through there's uh, still a few patrons in there uh, bar stools still some you know food and stuff sitting on the tables uh, and then you can actually look and see uh, there's actually they would have moved on over here to the bar so actually excuse me I'll reveal them you actually see what you would assume the patrons were talking about um, two were rats standing at the bar all right With that, uh, they have little rapiers in their hands, and they're sticking that you know towards the bartender and saying, "Give me your money." So, oh, I wasn't holding my button. Uh, I'll just just shout at him to uh, 
uh, put him down. I, I get, he, you said that he's holding him up, or is he just in the sense that like he's you know got a weapon pointed at him? You said a rapier. Yeah, they they both have uh, little rapiers in their hands, and the bartenders, you know, they're they're pointing it at the bartender, and uh, he's behind the counter, and they're telling him, "Give me your money." So he just has his hands up, like, "Okay, fine," and he goes to reach out under the bar as you walked in. That's what you're seeing in front of you. So. I'll just tell him to get down, and I'll I'll rush at the at the first one, getting out of the way so that people can come in. He looks over at you and sees you. And did you say you start rushing in after you yelled that? Yeah, I mean, if, if he's he's already got a rapier out, so if he's you know showing hostility enough to try to attack, then I'll go ahead and hit him. Otherwise, you know, I'll just rush at him and, and uh, rush. All right. So, um, can you guys give me initiative, please? And as you go to start rushing in, when you say that, the bartender will rush in as soon as you start. Or he sees kind of just for a second, like you know. What the hell is going on? But as soon as you start to be down behind the bar, just right where you on the floor. You got really robotic through all of that, Becky. Were you hearing that robotic? Yeah, he kept. You're cutting out a little bit. Okay, I think it's it's well, could be my side, but uh, but if Becky was hearing you cutting out as well, then it wouldn't be. I missed the Sukoden series. They be released on Steam now, right? Did they? Yeah, one, two, and three, I think. Shit, I didn't know that. What is that, guys? You're cutting out. Which one's being released? Yeah, you're. I think you're. Like, you sound fine to me now, G. But I think your side is where the network is. Uh, I said that uh, I missed Sukoden. Oh yeah, that was a good game. Yeah, I think I'm lagging on my side a little bit or something, because when I was rolling initiatives there for the enemies, I, that's when I was lagging, I believe. So I think it was making lag. So, uh, you yell that out, and so they, both of the were-rats, turn and face you, and... Oh, I need that. And it, you actually start the, uh, you get the first turn. See? Um, I'm gonna... Uh, by the well, you know what? I should have said something about it. Um, I'm gonna let's see. Five. It's hard to see where the grid is. Okay, the I'm off the grid there. Nope. Okay, I can't tell where the grid is. Oh, actually, there we go. Okay, I'm in there. Okay, they're they're off. There we go. Okay. Okay. Then from the doorway. I can make it to here. I'm gonna I'm gonna come around to this side, uh, and just as I'm running along, just just uh, uh, use. Uh, he he was well shit. He hasn't tried to attack us yet. I mean, he's still trying to rob the place, but they definitely look aggressive, right? They they look like they're gonna try to hit us. Yeah, they they again they had their weapons drawn at the bartender, and then as soon as they saw you, they turned around, and they seemed surprised, but they have their weapons up, and they didn't have a chance to start coming at you yet, but they are, you know, they still have their weapons up, and they didn't seem to be like, they didn't hold their hands up or say anything. They just turned okay. their attention to you as soon as the bartender ducked down, and you just came rushing in. Until they hit us, I'm gonna just hit them non-lethally. Um, so okay. just, as a, I'm gonna uh, try to trip him with the, the martial strike to try to knock him over. Uh, let's see. Okay. Eleven, damn it! I, I assume that doesn't hit. Nope, that did miss. All right, I'll spin it around and similar. I'm still gonna whack him with the with the butt end, but it'll it won't be the it'll martial strike. It'll be a regular hit. Uh, actually, get I because we have uh, extra attack now, so I actually get two more because that was my bonus action. So still non lethally, just uh. Okay. Until until they try to hit back us. Although I suppose us hitting him, they'll probably try to hit back. Nineteen. Uh, that one connects. All right. So the the trip misses. So I don't have the trip attack damage or anything. Actually, 
That still does the, well. That never mind. That was the one that missed anyway. So never mind. That wouldn't work. Uh, so it'll just be regular damage because not a favorite enemy, and he's not wounded. Okay, and then my last my because so I have extra attack now. So I have two regular attacks with my uh, action, and then my bonus action from being and a natural one. Uh, as you can tell, that one did not hit, but uh, nothing came up on the uh, table, so no ill effects, luckily. And nobody close to you that you could hit accidentally. Okay, just a good whack. And that's it for my turn. Yep, so again, he's he's small, so you got one hit on him, but he's just uh, a little bit smaller than you're used to fighting, especially when you're running around with a giant cow man. So not that you do fight, but still. And so he dodges a couple of these, so it takes a whack, and it is his buddy's turn. He sees you trying to bash on his friend. And uh, again, these guys, they don't seem like they're uh, overly confident, but they're this one's coming in to try to attack you. So. And again, he's only seen you so far. All right. Oh, I'm sorry. They didn't have red gears. They had short swords in their hands. That's what they were holding up. So, okay. And he has that same sword in his hand and tries to attack you. Takes a swing, but misses you, even though you're much bigger and easier to target. Gets my confident in this, and that second one goes again, and uh, he just, that one wasn't even really close. He just barely even had to move out of the way for that one, so they're not faring well so far. Ghost Eastern? Uh, I want to repost. Uh, they both tried, right? They both missed? Yeah, both attacks missed. Yeah. And no but that, were, was, uh, 12, that was from 12, right? Okay. Uh -huh. And that... 27 hits? Both hits. And he's not wounded yet, so just a regular one plus the repose. There you go. Yay. Definitely a good whack on him there. Uh, are you actually jabbing him, or was that non-lethal? No, he tried to hit me, so I'm, I'm gonna go for him. Go for the, it's all out stabby time now. Yeah, so he takes the spear right into his thigh, and uh, he's still up and able to move around, but it definitely sunk in pretty deep, and uh, he's hurting from it. He's sitting there holding it like Ace Ventura style, just going ah ah with the spear in his thigh. <laughs> I'll stab the other one once it's my turn. I mean, okay, right. Ghosty's turn. Okay. And again, that door was open, so he could get his little nose through it, but he didn't succeed with a one. So. God damn. <laughs> you guys are the natural ones today. Here we go again with the ones. Yeah, <laughs> off to a good start. Fox is rubbing up on you guys. Yeah, we're, we're just rusty. We haven't played for a couple of weeks. Yeah, no, it's been a while. Ghost runs and to go dashing in and jumps, but a geek misjudges it and goes way too high and goes over his head. And then he turns around turns around and tries to bite at his tail, at the rat's tail, and uh, doesn't get it. Doesn't get it. The little tail gets out of the way before he can get it. So. Yep, he's done. Okay. He's going for a total party kill and gets a couple of wear at. <laughs> it's uh, number 11's turn, the first one that you tried to hit, and... He did notice that a giant cat just tried to go behind him. So, and he sees that his friend is already well, not very successfully trying to attack the guy. So he's just going to face his worst fear and attack the cat as a rat. He gonna get it. But actually, instead of using his sword, he actually decides to. Get, he can. Uh, by that ghost, the way that ghost is trying to bite at him. Wait a minute. Oh, I just rolled the wrong thing. So the damn it, I said. Ghost bite, and... Uh-oh. He gets it, so he goes to bite Ghosty. He grabs onto his leg. And... Not too much damage, but... Um, Wait. Can you... Did. What? 
Did you take off? Did that damage go twice? First? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. So I need to take off that first one, which was four. Okay. So you should only have five damage. All right. Thank you. Okay, and can you have Ghost roll a con save for me, please? He needs to be at 11. Nope. Uh oh. <laughs> so, uh, I, I don't know exactly what the cinematic or whatever would be for this, but uh, Little Ghosty is now cursed. So, <gasps> what? Cursed to forever. He's going to be fish. a were rat dogfish cat? Yeah, that's right. He's a were fish <laughs> cat dog. Where at? <laughs> All right. Lycanthropy's a bitch. So does this mean he can turn into a person now? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that'd be hilarious. <laughs> okay. And let me double check out. Guess what time is okay. No, but he can go to try to swing at Ghosty. Bites at him and gets a bite. Oh, and then he goes to try to swing at him, but apparently totally fumbles. Oh, okay. Uh, so, if okay. Ghost is on the other but, side, is he getting plus one for being next to me or being across from me? Oh, Ghosty. Is he? That's what I'm saying. Uh, Oops, I didn't well, mean to move will, him. When he attacks, he will. And oh, then, he didn't? I, when he jumped over there? Oh, oh, the, oh! The, I didn't think about that. Let me go back and look and see if that plus. I would have only been eleven. Oh, okay. I didn't see what the number was. Okay. Okay, let me check. Um, no, barely would have still not hit. Thank you for the reminder, though. So the where rat goes to swing and totally fumbles, and um, he just basically freezes up in place. The stumble thing is, is that he cannot act in any way until someone else heals him in any manner, and these guys don't have any healing capabilities, so he's just going to stand there paralyzed. So, that was a nice little bumble on his part. Oh, so I need to... Yeah. See? He shouldn't have tried to bite the gigantic lion. <laughs> I know. It's his fault for being a jerk. Eldor, it's your turn, sir. Alright, I'm going to move a little bit over here. And I'm going to cast Bane on the, uh, the two were rats, 11 and 12. Okay. And they neither one of them succeeded, so they are both famed. There you go. Then I'll take a step back real quick. And that's it for the turn. Cool. So, they both seem a little bit less nibble than before, which is probably a good thing, because they seem kind of fast already. Uh, Akasha's turn? Yay, I can just make it in the door. His, his ass is paralyzed, so. Um, nice hit in the effects. <laughs> okay, that's just the dumbest thing I've ever heard. That's We're not going to say this actually happened, but a killer whale and a potted plant randomly fall from the sky. <laughs> so we're just going to say that for it actually didn't happen. So Sorry about that, guys. Hope that didn't hurt your phone. You can just turn those, like, you can just switch it to the regular 1G. Uh, we'll, uh, I guess you got to leave early, so just remind me, and I'll show you how to change it to the regular one. Okay, oh yeah, because there was a, a different way to do that one, huh? Yeah, that, that table has a bunch of really dumb shit in that. I went through and start to print them all out, but there's 200 total entries and probably 75. Like, you got to read through every single one, and, and, and I'm guessing it's around half or a little less. Uh, our stupid bullshit doesn't make any sense like that. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, so yeah, no no special effect, but definitely good hit on him, and he is uh, definitely bloody. Maybe you hurt him really bad with that arrow. 
it's the same right in through his chest, not in his heart, but in the other side of his chest. And uh, it's still in there, actually. And that is the end of Z round. Uh, Rob, it's your turn. You. All right, both of these guys are already wounded, right? Yes. I, ja I stabbed uh, 12 and then I whacked 11. I uh, shot 11 so. Okay, so 11 is the more wounded of the two? Yeah, he's not looking too good. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'm not leaving their, their range, but I'm going to step behind 12 so that I can get the full uh, plus two behind 11 here. I'm going to just try to stab him through the back. Uh, they've both acted, so nothing there, uh, but just plus two. Yeah, being so directly across from Ghost. Okay. Yeah, um, how wounded does he look? He is, uh, well, he's definitely past bloodied. All right, I'm not going to use a special then. 27? Yeah, you. I don't think you would even need it. And that does it. All right, then uh, Slayer, because he's already wounded. Damn. Oh, it, okay, it did knock him down. All right, cool. Oh, yeah. Knocked his ass out. Yeah, I think he had, uh, like, five HPs left, so you definitely kicked his ass. Okay. So you go to jab him, and he just kind of just lost or goes limp on the end of your spear, basically. Kind of just slides off. And he is toasted. All right. So I hop to to my right foot, jab him, and then I'm gonna hop over to the left a little bit to get directly across from this guy to uh, similarly jab him. Uh, and this one, I am going to use my bleeding attack if it hits. Okay. Eighteen. It does. All right. Then he's already wounded, so slay. Uh, he needs to make a con. Do you want me to? Well, it's a con DC 19. Here, I'll drop it. Okay. And he does not make it. All right. Whoops, did I drop that on? Where did that go? I, I applied the. Oh, I just rolled the number. Never mind. I dropped it on the. Okay. There we go. And that's it for, uh, I still have my bonus action. I'm going to, uh, as my bonus action, I'm going to, uh, kind of look around the, the room behind me, like just looking over my shoulder and then I'll turn back to face him. But I just want to look to see if there's more in here. Uh, you know, if there, if there's more like behind a counter somewhere or if they're harassing anybody else. All right. Can you give me a, uh, would that be investigation or perception? Probably more perception. Oh, if you're just looking, right? Real well, he, it was, it, his turn came up and he bled to death anyway. <laughs> From oh, I was going to say, you, he almost died from that attack. Yeah, so he was pretty fucked up, and so apparently that the bleed finished him off because the attack almost did. So uh, you go to uh, you go to jab him, and you can tell that he's he can barely even stand up. Uh, you turn around to take a look around. So if you want to give me a perception check, please, or an investigation. Sure. And then as you and then a quick glance, and then as, as soon as you turn back around, he's already in the process of falling. As it's tough, you know, ground, you get these out, ground, tell that he's, okay. he's not going to get back up. Uh, and when you try, try to, to and, you were, you're cutting out a little bit again, G. Just try to remember before the games, you know, an hour before the game or something to reset your guys' uh, it makes a big difference. Yeah, I always forget to do that. And, uh, so what do we around, see? When you turn around and look, uh, you don't see anything out of the ordinary. There's still a couple patrons back there that kind of uh, not all the way up against the wall, but moved back to give you guys plenty of space, and they're kind of just watching what's going on. But you do not see anything that looked hostile uh, when you turned around. So. All right. I'll just shout to everybody then. Is everybody okay? Pretty good. Ghost took a bite, though. Yeah, and you got cursed, too, so you guys are going to have to... I'm sure the Order of the Gong can probably help you guys with that. Sokka might even have... Yeah, if it's just a cure thing, I could take care of a curse. Okay. It, it didn't 
it's, uh, I'll have to look and see if it specified what kind it was, but it just said cursed and didn't seem like anything too special, so probably something you could take care of. Uh, at least, I don't know if Lesser Restoration takes care of curses, and I don't remember if Sako has Lesser Restoration. Uh, there was that, what was that thing that you had, Becky? I have removed curse for level three. It's not learned right now, but oh, I'll okay. rest up in. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's greater restoration, and there's not enough charges for another greater. Okay. In that case, then, if it's <laughs> if it's um, you know, Sako needs to or needs to prepare, uh, remove curse, then hopefully, you know, the overnight's rest because I'll have to rest for eight hours, which and this is kind of in the morning, so it's going to be a twenty-four hour block before Ghost could get uncursed. So hopefully it's not a full moon or something. So, kind of ruined all the fun because he never popped up like he was supposed to. But you actually hear something running up behind you, babe, because you are still standing in the doorway. Oh, well, then I'm going to whip around. <laughs> I hear it running up. Because <laughs> you just hear little skittering feeds you've heard of before coming up behind you. And so it was a... <laughs> now, hopefully, he's actually in the damn initiative order because I rolled initiative for him and he just never came up. But there is a third one. So, and he, well, he's coming up behind that, that little alley. So you're assuming he must have been outside and heard the commotion. And was coming we outside. had, we had two full rounds. Did he just not show up until round two? I, I'd never revealed him on the thing because I didn't want you guys to see him because he was coming around from the other side of the building. But then it skipped past his turn, even though I rolled initiative for him at, at the very beginning. So well, does he have right. does he have a number to the right, or is that box yeah. empty? He should be right after Ghost. He has a 16. Ghost has an 18 initiative. So. Okay. Um, if you seven, so. yeah, if you didn't have him visible, then you probably have it in your settings to skip invisible creatures. Uh, uh, I can show you how to fix that. Well, it's up to you if you, if you want to have it that way, but otherwise you can change it. No, I was going to have him because he would have, you know, come running in on his turn <laughs> instead of waiting until his friends were actually dead. That was supposed to be what happened, but so. But either way, we'll just say he's really fucking slow, and then now he saw what was going on, so he's coming up up the alleyway, and it is actually okay. Ghosty's turn. But you there... do hear somebody skidding behind you, babe, or something skidding behind you. <laughs> is there enough room for Ghost to get by me? Um, you could. He could probably get past you, maybe, and sneak sneak out the door and stand just to the north of the guy. Yeah, I'm just gonna stand there. Because you're only like blocking like half of the door there, as you can see, because you're kind of part way on the wall too. So, okay. Right. Well, then he's just gonna bite him. Okay. Because he wouldn't be able to get a straight run, so we wouldn't have been able to pounce. Nope. But that bite does connect though. Really? <laughs> Still though. Little little. You know he's gonna jump over him because he's still got like 15 feet of movement and just right behind him. Okay. Alright. Alright, and now. Hey, there he is. That was his turn. And. He sees ghost he trying to attack him but he's actually still he he's not sure like if his friends are actually dead or not so he's still going to try to get through the door but sees that it cautious in his way so he's going to try to swing his sword to weapon if he moved that far away then ghost is going to take his opportunity to attack him. he was trying to run through so but because he's just trying to go check on his friends he would try to push past you too but you can't get past really? you so he's going to try to hit you instead <laughs> Never mind. And Ghosty tries to bite his ass and misses. <laughs> but yeah, he did move out of the way, so. Right. He has this little rat sized short sword with him. This gets. They suck. Missed his first attack. I sink you again. And missed again. God, this guy sucks. So apparently, too worried about what the hell's going on and running too fast. Can't concentrate on what he's doing. Held Orchard turns here. All right, I'm going to take a movement. Uh, am I able to squeeze through that door? Oh, shoot, he moved. Um, am I able to fire an arrow between uh, Akasha and that doorway right there? 
Yeah, you'd be able to fire there. You wouldn't be able to get through because he's standing right there too. But uh, you can fire there just as long as you don't get like a, a one, then you won't hit a Gasha. But if you roll like a one, you'll end up hitting it. So. It's fine. Right. <laughs> I'm gonna do a uh, chest shot with the pistol um, okay. to uh, where where. Doing that click thing. I don't want to multi click on it. What click thing? Uh, if you click on the button, it doesn't work, but if you double click on it, there's a 50 50 chance that it'll roll multiples. Alright, so you pull out your gun, you go to shoot, and uh, doesn't get anywhere near Kasha, luckily, and hits him square on. Alright, I'm going to take a step back from that uh, shot. And we're good right there. Don't forget to roll the damage, though. Nice. All right, so you go to shoot him, and you actually take a step back. You noticed uh, when Ghost bit him, and you also noticed, too, uh, when you shot him, Sako, that it was uh, partially resisted. So, I mean, it still hurt him, but it didn't seem like it hurt him as much as it should. Although, wait a minute, I'm going to have to wreck on that, because ghost bites are magic so i will put that extra damage back on there so ghost didn't but your but your pistol uh you noticed it didn't hurt him as much as it uh you would assume it would have but it is don't hurt him enough and some silver bullets next time exactly <laughs> any bonuses sir um good for now everyone looks pretty healthy uh, with the exception of ghosts a little bit of all right next it's uh, kasha well, it's good. I don't care. He can take the opportunity to attack and step in the back. Okay. Tries to swing his little sword for the edge. He gets the sign. Not for much, though. It's a little cut on you as you try to, or as you do take a step back, and it's your turn. Alright, since I keep forgetting to do this, let's hunter your mark. And then we'll shoot him. Okay. And it hits. Nice. And, uh, that arrow bloodied him. You can tell he's hurt, and he's still dangerous and up and moving, but he is officially bloodied. Alright, I'm gonna step back over there. Okay. No. Wait, that's... 20, 25, 30. Yeah. Okay. There we go. Alright. And. New round. It's your turn, Holmes, but I will be right back AFK in a second. I'm curious if there are more coming. Or more, you know, around somewhere. Uh, I think those blue ones must be windows. I'm gonna run once Ben gets. I can't tell. I think this thing must be a door here, based on the look of it, because the windows are the blue ones. Like these are the windows, right? Yeah. I think that must be a door with a little porch in front of it. And there's no other doors that go outside, it looks like, other than the one that's behind them. So I can't go out. Yeah, I think I'll, I'll run through that door then and come around. And I'll at least be able to see down the alleyway to see if there's more of them coming. It was about right there, right, Becky? Like right there at the end of the table? Yeah, right about there. I can make it to about there then. I think I'll go ahead and I'll dash as my bonus or as my action and then I'll just use my bonus action. And I'll try to trip him with it as well. Actually, you guys are at range, so I won't try to trip him. I'll just whack him. I assume 21 hits, but we'll wait till Ben gets back. Okay. 
You back, G? I am. All right, this is a door right here, right? Yeah. All right, so I was at the end of the table there. I just ran up to the door, and then uh, I couldn't quite make it, so I used I used my action to dash to get up to the end here, and then just my bonus action to hit him with a, a martial strike. All right, and so like, twenty-one. That is yours, and I hit yes. Uh, he's wounded already. Uh, yes, he's he's bloodied. So. Right. I didn't notice there was a door there. That's thinking for the corporate guard area. Yeah, I was just trying to come around without blocking the doorway, and then I also want to looking over Ghost if there's any more coming. But that's. Uh, go ahead, babe. and just go ahead and give me another perception here. That's a good roll. Uh, again, your view is fairly narrowed because you're just looking down that corridor, but you don't see anything. At all. Don't hear any more. Like, I mean, there's probably a lot of ambient noise. Sure. Don't hear any more skittering of anybody coming. No, you actually don't. And again, that that's a good roll, so you can trust your ears even behind you a bit too. And you don't really hear much except for just a little bit of talking from those couple of patrons that you looked at the last time you looked around. So no distant okay. rat howls. And then down. <laughs> Yeah. So, you, but you don't hear any other rat sounds. You just hear, you know, some ambient talking from those those two folks. So, uh, okay. goes bites his was facing to the side. So he goes and grabs onto his arm and connects. Bib. Nice. Grabs his arm and starts yanking him around a bit. And okay. Yep. And it is his turn. Let's see. Wait a minute, actually, no, I need to correct that, so, yeah, because mm -hmm. they, they don't just have, uh, which Ghost is different, but I was wrong, they don't just have um, resistance to that stuff, they would actually have immunity to non-magic bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing, but Ghosty's, uh, is magic because of his collar, so he actually did, because it, it, it said the damage zero after he rolled, that's what the hell, so I'll go back and put that on there, so. How do I Actually, that? um, yeah. in his where his attacks are, because uh, you have it as a separate sheet. So where his attacks are is uh, his weapons. Uh, hit the magnifying glass to the right of him. Like you have him there as weapons, right? Yeah. Okay. Then hit the magnifying glass to the right of him, and then that uh, it'll say weapon, and then you know bite or claw or what. Uh, where it says dam under the damage section, and it shows type, it'll probably say slashing. You see that? One says piercing. Okay, Th then where it says piercing, do comma space magic. Actually, no space, just just comma magic. Okay. Now to make sure that it's working, uh, to make sure that that's right, uh, Ben, pay attention to what his HPs are right now, because you're going to change it back into a second. So look at what his HPs are. Uh, Becky, go ahead and roll damage on him real quick and make sure that it shows damage yeah. on Ben's side, and then uh, and then Ben just set the damage back. Yes. Oh, well. <laughs> go, go ahead and set him back and take the unconscious effect off. I actually don't need to, because that bite that he did was, you know, a magic bite, and that was one more HP than he had, so I was just going to tell you guys when you were done that Ghosty uh, yanked him by the arm, pulled him down to the ground, and he didn't get back up. He's bleeding out, so that was enough to kill him. So, okay. The actual hit that Ghost did. Ooh, that fucking time change last night really screwed me up having to work. Um, all right, so no more, no more coming that we can tell? Uh, no, not from what you've noticed, and uh, from as all of you guys looking around, you don't see anything else moving now. But you do see the bartender, Akasha Neldor, can notice that the bartender is popping back up from behind the counter and saying, uh, "Thank, thank, thank you guys." I don't know what the hell that was all about. I know these damn little—I've heard of these were rats out here causing trouble in the ward out here, but they haven't been in here yet. Is this a normal occurrence? Says no. They're just you know, uh, the area. I've, I've heard him around uh, the last few days. I've, you know, the other shopkeeps and stuff have, said, and the guards have said they've been harassed by a group of uh, halfling 
little halfling wear rats, but uh, there's not anything too common. So not wear rats, at least. Of course, there's always people causing some trouble, but usually just bar fights, nothing too serious. Well, maybe the the who was it? The gauntlet then? It was Eldor's people, right? To send us this way. Yeah. yeah. And he says, uh, so. Um, but I'm assuming that you guys are, you guys have a connection to Order the Gauntlet because you know some of the other folks around this part of the ward had asked for their help. So either you guys are just really kind strangers with good timing, or you were sent here. I'm guessing. Yeah, the Eldor here, the the big guy, he's got some connections with it. They asked us to come and help. I'll just shyly wave at the barkeep. <laughs> he says, "Man, we appreciate you guys, and we appreciate the Order of the Gauntlet too." Yeah, it's nice to see not all the guilds in town are corrupt. Some of them actually do some good things for folks like us out here. So, again, thank you. Uh, if you guys ever need a place to stay, it's on the house. And uh, drinks, too. You know, if you guys want some, just let me know. I mean, we were on a bar, so we're probably okay there. But <laughs> that's, that's still nice of you. He laughs and says, okay, well, so you guys know the ins and outs. I'm guessing you guys probably have uh, trouble at your place, too, so... Uh, I'll let you guys get back to it, but uh, again, thank you. And uh, and tell Sabra and everybody thank you from uh, us too. Sincerely. Yep, yep. So this was essentially just a rat shakedown? <laughs> yep, yeah, pretty much. Uh, <clears throat> you guys will have to see if Kelso knows anything about those uh, other were-rats that you guys just met. Depending on time, we might want to do like a, uh, a little rest, so maybe I can charge up my anti-curse and help out Ghost. Could probably drop by the gauntlet on the way back just to, you know, let them know and and uh, gather whatever uh, repayment there was for that. I don't remember if they'd offered any, um, but, you know, do that and then stop back, yeah, so that we can uncurse Ghost before he turns into a, a monster and starts attacking everybody in the middle of the night. Yeah. Let me pull that up and see what you guys' reward was. So yeah, you guys head back over to the uh, or the gauntlet and stop in and let them know of your success. Alright, so, um, apparently you guys are just really nice to Sako, because he's actually the only one that gets anything out of this. He gets two more renown points, so again, better standing in the guild, uh, but you also get a potion of healing. But it does just say each order of the gauntlet character, so Akasha and Rob don't get shit, because they don't care about you. That uh, potion of healing, um, do either of you have some type of potions of healing or some form of healing yourself? That's fairly... Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I can make mine. I think Becky can too. Did you went you went with one of the UA versions, didn't you? Yeah, I've got cure wounds and I've got like five potions of healing. Okay. Yeah, the UA version uh, for Ranger that I took uh, has the uh, shit. What's it called? Um, not salves. They're they're a thing you can make basically up to your wisdom score during a short run. Uh, poultices. You can make poultices. Really? I thought your version had it too, but maybe not. It's a third level, so you would have it if so. I don't think so. I'll double check. My The UA version that I have has no spells, though, so it's something that they put it in place of having, since you don't have cure wounds and stuff like that for the non the no spell version. So Eldor is preparing remove curse for the following. Yeah, just to kind of hand wave over, since we're gonna take a few hours, um, could I just do a uh, just keep everything the same on paper? But I'll go ahead and expel, expend one of my level threes to remove curse. Yeah, and also if you guys are just gonna hang it around, could he just is that a spell you could do as a ritual and not even have to burn a spell slot if you have the time to do the hour or whatever? 
it'll say if it's a ritual spell, Sako, okay. if you look at the info for it. I don't think it is. I'm double checking here. Okay. But uh, if there was anything we had to do for two days, then you could. Uh, no, it's not a ritual. Well, I think you. Did you. You still had a third level spell slot open, I'm guessing, right? Because all you did was a bane. So we could just say that you did that before you rested, and then you got a chance to get that spell slot back when you guys. He didn't have it prepared. He didn't, he didn't have ever. Prepared. Yeah, so yeah, he'd have to. Prepared. Yeah, he'd have to rest, prepare it, cast it, and then rest again to switch back to whatever he had previously prepared. But if okay, we don't cool. have anything we have to do that day, then it would. Okay, so while you guys uh, you guys get back and they're chilling and stuff, and uh, the next day you guys are just hanging around the bar, and. Uh, you guys see all your friends sniffles running around you know guarding everything and making sure that there's no regular size rats causing problems because if so he'll use his little tiny spear that you guys gave him to get him and uh kelso is also running around doing a security duty uh, not too much out of the ordinary it's actually a pretty quiet day uh, luckily uh, but you guys on that day you do have somebody from the emerald enclave uh, they didn't come as official business they just came in to uh have a drink but uh, when they see akasha they they do uh, motion you over to uh, come sit with them for a second because they have something that they wanted to talk to you about so you're gonna go over and have a seat yep i'm grabbing a beer first okay or ale whatever they're called and uh it's actually you've met her before because she's come in to tell you about you know basking stuff for the guild and everything it's another uh half elf woman and when you sit down, she's like, uh, hey, nice to see you again, girl. How you been? Not too bad. How are things? Eh, not too bad. Um, eh, this is not official business. I just wanted to give you uh, a heads up. But uh, there's been a little bit of ruckus around town because Xanathar has been sending not just his usual, uh, you know, thugs out in the street to cause problems. He's actually been releasing some monsters out there. So I've heard there's a couple of uh, Grell flying around. And I'll show you what those look like. They've been just flying around just terrorizing people and uh, don't really know why they'd be in town messing around unless it was something that was released by Xanathar. So keep an eye out for those things when you guys are out and about if you get a chance because if you can take them down for us, we'd, we'd appreciate it. So, I mean, we're going to be out there doing it too so you don't have to but we'd appreciate to, if you're out there to keep an eye out for these things or uh, keep your ear open for ruckus and see if you can go find these damn things no, we've gotten yeah. word that there's two of them running around take a look around she says thanks it's uh we're guessing it's a distraction because there's also been more uh, robberies you know people on the street and uh, businesses being robbed and all that stuff too by xanathar's actual thugs so we're guessing those nasty flying brain looking monsters are just a distraction for that so keep an eye out for thugs too but and uh make sure you beef up your security here because who knows if they'll come in and try to mess with you guys too are there any specific places that his thugs are hitting or just random they've she says they've, they've been mostly all over town it's kind of just random and uh Usually those things will fly somewhere and go mess around and then not too far from there a business will get hit or some, you know, pedestrians walking the street will get mugged. So pretty sure those things are being used for the distraction, but we haven't really noticed any kind of pattern though. So. Okay. I'll keep an eye out for them. Okay. And they said, she said, oh, uh, last place that we heard of them, uh, last night they were actually uh, reports in the dock ward. Uh, they say they saw one of those things pick up some old lady and drop her. Ended up breaking her hip. Poor lady. So, dock board's the last place we heard of those things. Okay. Alright. So, she says thank you. And, uh, you guys carry on. And, oh, we're gonna remove that cursed from Ghost. So, I'm guessing, Sako, you went ahead and cast that spell and got rid of uh, poor Ghosty's curse? Yep, no more ghost curse. Right. He appreciates it. Okay, guys. Um, anything else? Oh, Kelso comes over. When you guys are there, Kelso comes over and asks how you guys are doing. He sees you uh, 
Eldor and uh, and Rav. You guys are there, and he asks you guys how you're doing. Mm, doing fine. We we just had to get rid of some of your former brethren. How familiar are you with other of your? Um, I'll look around and make sure that nobody's kind of overhearing because it, it's not widely known that he's a were rat, right? Not unless you guys said anything to anybody. Otherwise, nobody else knows except for, of course, um, um, Woody. He's obviously yeah. sees everything. So. Yeah, if, I mean, if others don't know, then I won't try to out him on it or anything. I'll just uh, I'll look around and ask him how how close knit of a community are his. He says, uh, you know, not not really too much because we most of us are you know do criminal kind of stuff. It seems like from what I've seen in town, the other where rats that I've seen in the way that I used to be as well too. So none of us are really all that united unless we happen to be working for the same person. So I don't really know much about the others in town, but uh, uh, I, I thought everybody from the shard shunters at least was done after at, well, our encounter, you know, looking at you. So he says, I don't think they'd be anybody from our old group, but maybe they are. Well, yeah, we, we found three of them trying to shake down a, a tavern in the field ward. So, you know, I was just curious if it's any of your folk, anybody you might have been familiar with, and I'll give them a description of what they looked like, you know, while they were still not run through with spears and arrows and gunshots. Yeah. Uh, and one of them that you described, he says, you know, actually, that actually does uh, sound like a, a guy that I used to know when I was still in, in the Charge Hunters Guild. So I, I don't know if he's if they were trying to restart the guild or whatever, but that, that one of those descriptions actually does sound familiar well he did he said yeah well that's probably not a bad thing again it's not like those were the the best group of uh, people if you want to call them that so not a big loss there well as long as you don't mind that they're dead I suppose you know back to work he says nah I don't mind at all and again I appreciate this job too thanks chief and then he kind of gives you a thumbs up and walks back to what he was doing. Just standing there trying to look as imposing as possible at all three and a half feet of him. I'm going to I'm gonna go find Sniffles and, and tell Sniffles that he needs to keep his, his employees and I didn't like how uh, how he was talking. Call me chief. <laughs> I'm kidding. Right. Sniffle looks at you and he takes his hand, you know, and like salutes you. And then he just <laughs> actually marches. He doesn't just walk like one foot, you know, you know, in front of the other. He marches over to denim leather jackets was flailing, <laughs> exactly. uh, blowing, around, blowing in the wind, all dramatic. He marches over to Kelso, and he looks at Kelso, and he puts his hand on his hip, and he starts shaking his finger back and forth like this, and making his little odd, you know, sounds because he doesn't really speak you guys' language. So, and Kelso kind of just looks at him. And just, like, he knows that he can't actually be a dick, but that look on Kelso's face is like, man, I just want to tell you to fuck off, you little shit. It's like, kick you across the room. But he doesn't do it. And he sits there and just nods his head. He's like, yeah, I got it. I got it. And again, it's not like he can understand what he's saying, but still, he's just trying to trying to be sniffle. So he has been reprimanded severely. I was just kidding anyways. <laughs> <laughs> sniffle didn't know that. He just went marching off as soon as he said that. So. I'll throw Kelso a beer. All right, guys. Anything else you wanted to do today, or did you want to go see if you can track down those brain creatures? Yeah, we go see if we can find the bark, uh, brain beak thing. Okay. Flying brain birds. Yeah. Right, There's so a lot of animals that are confused about their identities in this game. <laughs> Our monkey barking cat rat. Fish. Yes. Well, that's that's how they identify. It's a brain creature, but he identifies as a, as a flying snake beaked brain creature. Animal species is fluid, right? Yeah. Obviously. And, I mean, those things don't even have eyes, so they probably don't have any genitalia either. Who knows? You guys could find out if you wanted to. No thanks. <laughs> All right, guys. So we'll just say that you guys rested up for the rest of that day, um, so that way you can get your 
spells like back soccer unless you guys did want to leave that same day because if not we'll just say that you guys hung out for the rest of the day and then left the next day unless you guys wanted to leave at night since we're not in a time crunch we could just do a long rest make sure everybody's good yeah i think i already applied a long rest for you guys didn't i you guys got all your yeah, yeah i'm i'm full now so okay yeah i'm good right. so you guys get up and head out and you guys start moving out to the dock where you leave you know fairly early in the morning after you guys get up and uh, have something to eat and everything and you guys head out into the uh well actually towards the dock ward and while you guys are on the way over there you do hear some more commotion yet again Map incoming. I'll drop you guys on there. So you hear again commotion and people yelling, What the hell is that? So you guys go down this street and do see a creature with tentacles hanging down uh, in the beak and this big giant brain without any eyes and wings kind of just hovering in place just a few feet above the ground, not flying too high. So we can see you guys. Okay. They're not the same. You're just using those tokens, right? They're not the... Because th that looks like the little... Um, oh, the brain things that the uh, Mind Flayers were using, remember? Yeah, is that uh, no they they are different creatures but uh i didn't see a token for grills and okay. so i just found other i just searched for brain and, uh, another uh, brain creature. thing <laughs> yep they look so, like brain no. frogs yeah that's what yeah. they remember the um uh god damn what were the intellect intellect devourer yeah i, I think. think that's what it was um they were that they uh it was early on in dungeon of the or in uh uh when we went under the, it was I think it was in the Zentrum hideout, and uh, we were trying to find, um, oh god damn it, the nobleman that that was initially there that that uh, had been spotted with the explosion, uh, the Never Win, R Rainier Never Ember or whatever, and there was a mind flayer there, and he had sicked those on us. He had sicked these little brain frog things on us. Uh, in Critical Role, they're the things that uh, in the very in the very beginning of Critical Role and like the first um, Underdark arc. Like, did you watch it from the very beginning back here? Did you skip to the um, the I vampire just, guys? I just skipped forward because I couldn't understand what they were saying. Yeah, the first the first few sessions were uh, very difficult to get through just because the audio was so bad. Um, but in the basically when they were in the Underdark when they first found Pike and. Uh, uh, God damn it! I can't remember her name now. Uh, but basically, when they were first going after uh, through the Underdark area, uh, uh, Grog got eaten by or his brain was was absorbed by one of the Intellect Devourer thingies. <laughs> yeah, so these things. Kima? Yeah, that's that's where they found Kima exactly. I couldn't remember Kima's name. Sorry, go ahead, babe. <laughs> oh no, that's fine, guys. Go ahead. I was just going to say these things are different. The other ones you found actually were walking on the ground. They were just, they were like, uh, I think they might have had tentacle legs or whatever, but they walked on the ground. It wasn't like a bunch of tentacles. These ones are a little bit different. They fly and they have tentacles and these ones have beaks. And so they are different. They're kind of well, that, that token is how, so. that token is how intellect devourers are described. So I think that's correct for that, uh, but not for the flying rail guys. Just, it doesn't matter if it's not the same token anyways, it's fine. Yeah, I couldn't find one um, grills, I stole the brain one. But these guys are grills, yes. Like that image that I showed you guys. So, and they're actually and they are, so that's what they are. They are trying to attack people? Yeah, they actually are in the process of attacking people. Well, because you heard some yelling and screaming, and then the one, uh, number 11, directly in front of you guys, uh, was trying to attack somebody, and the person slipped by him and was running down that street, going the same direction that you guys are facing right now. So uh, it's getting away. And then you guys start walking up, and... 
the number 11 over there notices you guys, so he stops paying attention to that person that he was fucking with. Oh, well, wait, wait. <laughs> and turns around to face you guys, so. And then he starts to, he makes this, uh, he opens his beak, he makes this really high pitched kind of like squawking sound. And then you can see that he's going to start moving towards you guys, so. Roll Initiative. Please. All right. Man, Ghost is just having a bad day. <laughs> a really bad day. At least he's not a wear ghost anymore. Sure. Not that he can right. do much anyways if these guys are flying. He said they're they, not flying they're very far off the ground, right? Yeah, they're, it's, uh, they're, um, under their little character sheet thing where it says their fly speed, it says hover in parentheses. So I guess that means that they probably don't fly super high. And right now they're not, they're like just a few feet off the ground. So he could run up, he could jump up and grab shit. He could probably reach him without grabbing it at least the tentacles. So yes, he so can still is the, up. is the head of it, the brain part of it, is that at like, you know, six feet? Like, is that like human eye level? Yeah, so so the uh, yeah, that's you know probably about three feet or so of tentacles, you know, and then the brain area, beak area is probably you know six, maybe seven feet off the ground, depending on how high he's hovering. But it is within striking distance for all of you guys, and then Ghost will be able to jump and grab the brain, and if not, he can just bite the tentacle and try to pull it down or something. So uh, that just says hover. So again, I, I assume that means they're not too high to hit melee, right? That's what it's going in. Yeah, I mean that, that's how I would assume it to be. I mean, hovering could mean at any uh, any height, but I, I, if they were hovering, you know, forty feet off the ground, they really wouldn't be a threat to the people here. So if they were attacking people, then they obviously had to be hovering a uh, reasonable level because the people aren't floating forty feet off the ground. Yeah, the one that's directly in front of you guys is again not far off the ground. His tentacles are pretty close to the ground, to the bottom of the bar, so he's malleable for sure. Yeah, and he actually sees you guys and he starts advancing towards you. So, you know. See what he oh, that's kind of cool. Just a little over there. So he comes at you uh, and then he doesn't have a chance to get all the way to you and he is still obviously fixated on you guys. Not able to do anything up because he doesn't have much range. So it's your turn, G. Um, we are half on. I think. Or, yeah, it doesn't matter. Okay. Uh, I'll just. Uh, uh, yeah, I'll, I guess. Suppose I'll rush forward around Ghost. Uh, is he facing the other way, or is? I guess so. The that eh, doesn't matter. Oh no, he no, he is facing you guys. I just got it mixed up with the, what legs are what. So, yes, he is facing you guys. Okay. So those are little arms in the front, and then frog legs in the back. Yes, so he is facing you. <laughs> he okay. was facing you guys as he was coming after you guys. I'm gonna I'm gonna use my bonus action to lunge because I'm not sure if these guys are you know threatened if they if they're more of a threat up. So I'm gonna use my bonus action to to lunge so that I can uh, get an extra five feet. Um, and I will jab him uh, at a distance. And he hasn't acted yet. Actually, I get an advantage on that because he hasn't acted yet. Oh, he moved, but he... Uh, you know what? He moved. Never mind. I, I think moving still counts. It's not just an attack, so... Uh, okay. I think. So never mind on that. Uh, so a, I assume an 11 doesn't hit? No. Does right, not. Try my second. How about a 14? Yep. That one hits. All right. Uh, no ads because he's not injured yet or anything. Thanks, damn it, uh, and that was twenty-five for me to get there. I'm gonna. What's that? Oh, I said that'll do. They got a ten. Oh yeah. Uh, I, I, I'm gonna hop back over here uh, just to be out of the way to, to have room. Okay. And that's it for my turn. All right, so you go and give him a nice jab, and you get, again, this really high-pitched squeaking sound, and you get a nice little stab into the little side of his brain, not center mass, but you get a nice little, you know, stab into it, and he starts bleeding out. He's kind of 
odd, like a black looking kind of blood. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna taunt him. I'm gonna tell him that uh, he's going in my wet sack as soon as this is over. With the gazer corpses. I was gonna say you have a whole collection of weird ass shit that you killed. So. Did yep. you keep the? Intellect oh yeah, devourers I've got. For a while. I think I've got three. Oh yeah, I did. I definitely did. I took that. I think there were two intellect devourers at least. One. And then I had three gazer corpses and some black pudding ooze. Uh, the, the, the 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 poison stock majiggy from uh, the displacer, like the ending, that thingy. Yeah. And I'm preserving them all in formaldehyde so that I can make just one really cool monster. I'm gonna stitch them all together. Hell yeah, reanimator style patchwork. Okay. Yep. <laughs> all right, we're gonna use Hunter's mark. Actually, remember to do this. It does. So you sink an arrow into him? I'm just gonna stay there. Okay. Yeah, nice arrow. So he's taking a couple hits. He's not quite bloody, but he is definitely taking a little bit of a beating so far. Eldora, it's your turn. Alright, I'm gonna take a step down and take a shot with my pistol to uh, okay. number 11. And I'm going to assume you reloaded after that last fight in the last two days that you had sitting there. So. Oh yeah. So you'll still have another shot too. Uh, luckily, because that one missed, we just shoot at him and he kind of hovers up a little bit higher and it goes in between his tentacles. Boo. Any bonuses? Uh, it's time, no. Everyone's looking healthy. Alright, and you guys see another one coming down from around the corner. Yep, and he stops there. So he stops there and is looking at you, G. And even from there, he takes one of his tentacles and starts swinging it around. Oh, I've still got reach till it comes back around on my turn, so if he misses, I'm going to rope out. Is it your way? But he misses. Yeah, repose time. And... Okay, go ahead. Can you hear me? Okay. Yeah, you were supposed to go ahead. Seventeen. To, and that hits. When he was going to swing at you, you could tell that he wasn't just trying to hit you, he was trying to kind of grab you too, so you had the feeling that these things are going to try to uh, grab onto you if they get a chance with their tentacles. And that's, that what I was, that's what I was concerned about. That's why I kept distance, because with those tentacles, I figured there was... Uh, I was thinking something like squid or uh, jellyfish, where they use the tentacles to try to pull towards the beak. Because that's kind of what it looks like, so that was my assumption. Uh, all right, then uh, is it this one injured yet? Um, no, uh, twelve or excuse me, eleven's been hit. Four has not been hit. Yet. Okay. All right, then just the uh, damage add from the repo. That's it. In, since he wasn't able to pull you in with his tentacles, and as you guys noticed, he was able to hit at 10 feet with his tentacle, so just to warn you. So he comes in a little bit closer and tries to beak you. I already used my reaction, so I can't react again. And the beak hits better than this than the tentacles. goes in the slashes you with his beak he's got the nice razor beak again pretty much like an octopus beak pretty much and it goes and gets a decent little cut on you it doesn't hurt you too bad but... all right ghosty's turn okay so quick question are these all businesses along here or is there like one business and some houses you got some shopping to do 
No, but there's supposed to be people robbing while these guys are around, so I was going to send ghosts to go find somebody. That's okay. robbing uh, business. Uh, yeah, there's it's it's a combination of all the chamber that is. So there's some houses. I mean, also there's again pedestrians have been robbed, and you'd assume there's probably been some house breakers and shit too. They've just been on a bit of a spree while they send distracting creatures like this out to fucking people. So I'm sure if you went around the looks, you can possibly find something going on. All right, then I'm just gonna take um, a direction. I guess send them down this way. Go find something. See if you can't find them. Xanathar's guys. All right, then have him do a perception for me, please, so we can see if he can, you know, kind of see what's going on. And he can use his nose, too, so maybe he can sniff out some guys and remind him of, you know, one of those uh, Xanathar guys, Xanathar guys, or whatever. Uh, oh, hey, do you remember that guy? And he can probably remember that smell. So he can try to see if he can follow his nose like you can, Sam. <laughs> so it's not a super Follow strong your way. nose. <laughs> he has to get it right. Your nose. Um, was that Family Guy? Yeah, it was. Uh, I think Brian was trying out for a commercial part. And, you know, oh, that's right. Yeah. There too. Yeah. Um, so Ghosty gets. He, he doesn't like immediately pounce into action, but he does look at you uh, and then turns around and starts walking that way at a decent pace. So you get the feeling that his nose is on to something and he starts moving down that way that uh, you sent him down there down that alley. So you're assuming one of those buildings must have something going on in it so he is going down that way i'm just gonna tell him to roar if you find somebody and that will be his turn so he bobs his tail a couple times at you to let you know that he heard you but he doesn't even turn around and just keeps carrying on that way new round this one's turn and he sees that uh the guy with the spear has already been engaged by his friend or whatever the hell you call it, the animals, they probably don't even have friends, but in this one comes over and sees the giant cow man, and in a similar fashion, starts to swing his tent to go over there, get out of the stop hill, but not with that, because he rolled a one, these guys suck, he did. Yeah, that's not going to help with an NPC like this. So, you can add one add one to an ability score and decrease it by another, so I could like change the stats or whatever, you know. Don't even bother with that. So, and he's already close enough to you, so he's going to try to beat you since he messed with his tentacle. Yeah, that's going to But that does not work either, so he still can't hit the giant cow, man, but he tried. It's um, I'm gonna go for a good old stab on four. I'll just go with all three attacks, and I'm going to. How wounded does four? I, I jabbed him once, but how like does he look like he's falling apart? No, he's not quite bloody yet. I mean, it was a decent hit, but he is not to the bloody state yet. Okay, I'm gonna try to. Question. Sorry, since I didn't use a bonus action that last turn, can I use a bonus action right now to assist Ruff? Would that be something you could do, G? I mean, it's generally the like you. you how, well, how how do you what are you trying to do, Sako? Because pretty much, unless it's on your turn, it would need to be as a reaction. Oh, that's what this. Okay, that's it. What, okay, what was it? What is it that you were trying to do? Uh, I was just going to cast a shield of faith on you. Uh, well, I mean, if if you're essentially as a retcon, it's up to Ben if you would, you know, allow that. But that's something you would need to do basically on your turn. It's not something you could do during somebody else's unless it's a reaction ability. Yeah, I got that confused with the reaction. Gotcha. All good. All right, I'm gonna go for a good old stab. I, I'm gonna first. I'm gonna try to trip him. Actually, I'm gonna try to just whack him with the butt end of the spear on the top of its brain head to try to knock him down to the ground. So I'll try to trip him first. Okay. God damn it. We're all really low. No, I assume right. that doesn't hit. No, that that doesn't hit. Uh, and yeah, go ahead. Roll again. Okay. I'll just go with it. Since the since that missed, I'll just swing it around and just slash it up twice with my with the shark. God damn, eleven okay. again. I think it's like three or four times that I've gotten eleven today. I'll roll two. 
All right, the uh, last attack, 27. That one, yes. Last one gets it. All right. And he's wounded, so the Slayer on there. And that is it for my turn. So, oh, sorry, babe, I was just going to say, you go with the last hit to jab him, and you can tell that he is bloody now. He's definitely still dangerous, but he is officially bloody. Okay. I'm moving back here. Try and stay out of range. Right. <laughs> nice. And that was... Yeah, so you send an arrow into him, and he is bloodied as well, too. Again, still up and moving, but both are bloodied. Since he has chosen to be damaged, uh, Grell 11, I'm going to attack him with my staff. Okay. Since he's chosen to be damaged? Yeah, he walked up to me. That means hit me. Hit me hard. <laughs> I see. So you go and swing your staff down and bash the top of his brain, and it hits. So you go and whack him on top of the head, and you see this, uh, like it goes flat for a second there, and then it kind of puffs back out a little bit, but he has this nice contusion on his head. It's kind of pulling up with blood. We just smashed him. Any more, All right. any bonuses? Yeah, I'm going to cast that on, uh, on Rob over there. Right. Shield of Faith. What's that do? Uh, it uh, grants you a plus two bonus to your AC for the duration. Hell yeah. Is it concentration? It is. Cool. Gotta keep you from breaking or losing your concentration. Alright, so I see three... I don't know which one to choose here. Which effect. There's three of them that last for ten minutes. Uh... Oh, um, the one that doesn't say self. How about that? Okay. So the self one is the concentration effect that you need to keep on you. And then, yeah, that's the correct one to put on me. Uh, so that's good. And then the one that says self, click that. There you go. That's it. That's that's the, the marker for your concentration. It doesn't. That's not changing your AC. That's just basically putting the, the concentration effect on yourself so that when you get hit, it'll roll a uh, check to keep your concentration up. Sounds good. I'll mark off my uh, spell slot for that. That'll help, and thank you. I'm good. If I move away, he'll get an opportunity attack, so I'm going to stick around for... Uh, did he roll a 20 or higher? Uh, no, his actual roll was 19. Okay, well, as long as you get a 20 or higher total is what I mean. Yep. All right. And uh, it even says the defense effects plus two from the Shield of Faith on there. That's kind of cool. That's what I was looking at. I wasn't sure what that was at first. But... Yep. Alright, and so he goes to whack you, and can you give me a con save, G? You gotta beat it. Go up. Um, I'm gonna use my determination to give myself advantage on the roll. Okay. You said con save? Yeah, please. Jeez, with an 11, I got a with advantage, I got an 11. 
Yeah. Uh, and so, good thing you used that, your determination, because you got exactly what you needed, because you had to beat an 11. So, uh, if you get the same number, it passes, right? Yeah, it's the, the, yeah the roll goes to the, to the runner is what it's... Yep. And uh, it's a good thing, because if you would have got whacked, it would have been not four different effects that you would have been affected by. So, you're lucky. But he does yeah. still whack you with that, and now he is going to try to beat you. Not with that one, though. He goes to try to beat you, and it is way off. It's Ghosty's turn. Is he still going to carry on? Yep. Do I need to do another perception? Uh, yeah, actually. Go ahead and do another perception, see if he can get a better spiel. Cool. Yeah, he definitely picks up on something, so he goes off into one of these places over here, which is off map, but uh, the blue building. So to his left of the way he's facing, he goes inside that building. Well, he when he turns around, you see him go to the left, I guess you can say, like when he goes down that alley. So you're guessing he goes into the blue building. So you went around the front of that, to the other side of that blue building, at least, whether it's the front or the back or whatever. So okay. you're guessing he's in there. Levin's turn, and he's going to try to get you, Sato. Payback for whacking him. There's more sticks to the brain where that came from. Yep, he tries, but ah, he missed. He rolled decently and still missed. But, so he doesn't get kind of weak. Not with that one, though. So, he goes to try to get you twice, and you get out of the way both times. Rob, it's your turn. Alright, I'm gonna... Uh, you said he's bloodied now? They both are. Alright. I'm gonna... Try to bleed him as well. Uh, the one that's directly in front of me here. So, we'll try the attack. 23. Alright, then a con save. He does not succeed. Alright. You're gonna die. And he is already wounded, of course, so Slayer. All right, and then I'm going to, uh, with him bleeding from the from the jab, I'm gonna, uh, I'm not gonna leave his range, but I'm gonna hop over here, uh, and then I'm gonna take my other two, my bonus action attack, and my uh, and my other stab at this. Uh, or uh, you know what? I think I'm gonna shit with him bleeding. I, 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 how wounded does he look after that after that stab? Uh, the one that you hit with the bleed. Number yeah. Four. Yeah. Uh, yeah. He he is. He's actually holding himself up. He's not even hovering anymore with his tentacles. He's not much. He's not got much left in him. So I'm gonna then I'm gonna jump out of. Okay, I'm gonna jump out of his range underneath this rooftop a little bit here, so he'll have a regular opportunity attack. Uh, whatever, whatever his normal one is, it's probably just his like beak bite or whatever. Yeah, I think that's what it would be. So he's going to try to beak at you when you try to move. Misses though. Okay. And then I will uh, stab at, uh, 11 here uh, directly across from uh, L. So it's a blast too. Uh, 23 total? Yeah. It connects. And. Alright, I technically still have my bonus action. I'm gonna. Uh, I'm not going to use it. I'm just going to uh, watch uh, four here, and as soon as if he, I'll go. What I'll do is I'll use my bonus action to uh, to uh, get myself reach. Uh, you know what? Never mind. I'm going to spear mark him with my bonus action. So if he comes within range, uh, I'm gonna, then I'll jab him, and that's it for my turn. All right. So number four gets uh, no eleven is toast. He is lying down, dead on the ground, bleeding, and it's a cautious turn. 
already. I'm going to um, step down this way so I can get a shot. And I'm going to remove my hunter's mark then over to this guy because it's a bonus action to move it. him, it goes all the way through his little brain thing, and he finishes falling down, and he is no stupid. I'm sitting on number 11. From the key bag of brain? The brain looks soft, so it's a good place to sit. Yeah, make a good seat. Alright, and then I'm just gonna yell at them that I think the Thanathar's guys are down this way and start following ghost. Okay, so you go down there and you uh, go around to, to the other side of the room, which is off map, apparently. Yeah. But you go down there and you look in there and you do see Ghost on the inside. And that place you do see, uh, there's three guys in there um, and they are ransacking the place. And you look around and you don't see the shopkeep, but you also haven't, you know, looked for too long yet. But you do see three guys in there ransacking the place. And Ghost uh, is in there, growling, and one of them is standing there, like like with his hands up. He still has his weapon in his hand, but he kind of has them both up, like he's definitely kind of afraid to go. So he's kind of just standing there, actually. And two others are kind of still ransacking the place because they didn't even notice that their their friend is being interrogated, essentially, by a, a fish cat. So. Um, that's all I can do my turn. Well, for now, we can say you guys are out of initiative order, so... What you see, Akasha? Um... Uh, well, there's guys in here robbing the place, so... Probably stop them. <laughs> if we're out of initiative order, then can I shoot one of the guys still robbing the place? Yeah, yeah, I mean, you can, if you want to. I mean, there's still that one standing there looking at ghosts, so if you want to talk first, you can, but you don't have to. You can shoot any of them that you want to. The one standing right there, or the two that are moving around, ransacking the place, knocking shit over, putting stuff in their bag. You know, I'm going to shoot one of the guys that's actually still trying to put shit in his bag, like, in the leg. All right, just go ahead and roll uh, just a straight attack for me, please, without a target. Yeah, well, that obviously would have been enough to hit most anything. So you go shoot an arrow into one of their legs, and he's, again, not even paying attention that anybody or anything else is there except for his buddies. So he feels an arrow in his leg, and he kind of, like, drops down to his knee on that side and turns around and says, what the fuck was that? And then his other friend turns around and looks and sees you guys there, too, and then sees that his friend is being, you know, held up by a cat. So he says, what the hell? Who the hell are you guys? Uh, Your doom. You? <laughs> <laughs> he says, uh, he says, well, we're just, uh, doing what the boss said, so, you know, we don't want no trouble. We're just, just here to try to collect some stuff. You don't want trouble, but you're trying to rob places? You should have been expecting trouble. Mm -hmm. He says, damn it, that's what the, what the hell those fucking flying brain things are for. Well, there, where, where the hell are those things? No, oh, I'll pull, I'll pull one out of my sack and, and just kind of hold it up like uh, Medusa heads. You mean these things? I'll just wipe my butt and just show them the slime from the brain. <laughs> that, is that brain thing still stuck to your ass, Sokka? Like it's just, you got it's just there the... when you got up and walked away. Oh yeah, it's just a slime on there. <laughs> All right, so you show him that, and he's like, "Whoa, you guys killed those things, man." Um, I don't know. We don't. We don't want any part of you guys. We're just. We're just trying to do what the boss said. We'll. We'll put it all back. We'll set it all down. We promise. And then he opens up his bag and just like turns it upside down. Just dumps a bunch of shit out. Money, supplies for the shop. You know. So. I don't even. I guess maybe it's just like a potion shop or something. You know. So he just drops some potions out. Whatever kind of merchandise you assume they grab from here, and possibly merchandise from other places. 
Can I intimidate them? Yeah, because again, they're, they're dropping the stuff, but you still don't know what's going to go on. So go ahead and roll an intimidation. I'm going to smoke my vape pen so I get a uh, bonus uh, advantage on intimidation. Okay. So you bust out your vape pen. And yeah. Pull out this huge cloud of smoke. And now you feel meaner. I'm just going to point at their feet. I'm going to say your shoes. Take off your shoes. <laughs> Leave them here. Just you don't want to mess with the guys who's rolling cotton. He says, what the hell are you going to do with shoes? They're shoes. You don't even have feet, dude. You have hooves. How are you going to fit my shoes? Leave the shoes. No one gets hurt. <laughs> you can the either leave them or we can take the feet off. Then you can leave them anyway. <laughs> he says, man, I'm sure it's not easy to walk on little stubs like you have there, hoof man. And I don't want to be walking on stubs either, so I think I'm going to do the smart thing. Then he starts taking his shoes, his boots off. I don't know if mocking our cow friend was the smart thing. She says, I didn't, I didn't mean it. I didn't mean it. He's like, just take the shoes in here. And he takes his personal, uh, well, this little coin purse off of his, his belt and cuts it off and drops it on the ground too. Because again, they already emptied their, their sacks of merchandise out. But he's like, here, have that too. I, I didn't mean it. So there's a little coin purse on the ground as well. That's how you do a robbery. <laughs> and these and these guys say wait a minute so you, you don't want us robbing but you're going to rob us what kind of morals is that well, you're the bad guys so <laughs> says, what's a bad guy we're just doing our job what are you talking about and why are you good who do you work for hey you still got your feet so uh be lucky he says yeah you're right uh, I think I'm just going to get out of here. Uh, that is, and he starts to turn around and then he turns back around really fast and says, that, that is if it's okay with you guys. <laughs> uh, I don't care. They didn't Any say other we questions? had to get the robbers. What do you think, Ruff? Tie them up? Ask questions? I doubt they don't know anything. They're probably just low grade. Uh, shop key, uh, 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 second floor people, that's what they're called. Second floor worker, something like that. It's upper floor, second floor, something like that. It means robbers. Uh, so they're like hired outside of Home Depot or something. Yeah, they're, they're, they're not, they're basically, they're like a low grade. Thing. Second floor workers is what it's called. I think the boots and the coin purse will be fine. They say, oh, man, you guys are generous. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, they go. And one of them, you know, takes his friend's arm and puts it over his shoulder, the one that got the arrow in the leg. And he, they haven't even pulled the arrow out yet. And they just go walking oh, off with the one helping no. the other. I'm going to go pull my arrow out. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So you stop them and say, hey, hold the fuck on. And then you go pull your arrow, arrow, pull your arrow out. Yep. <laughs> do you do it nicely or do you kind of give it a little twist no. first? No, I'm just going to rip that fucker out. Because <laughs> <laughs> when you walk up and they say, they say, uh, 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 we're cool, right? I mean, you said we could leave, right? To you, yeah. if, if you start walking up to them. Yep, nope, that's fine. I just need my stuff back. Thanks. <laughs> they say, what stuff are you talking about? At that point, I rip it out his leg. <laughs> <laughs> and he, he like, definitely yells out loud, like howling out loud, and says, ah, uh, you could have been nicer about that, but uh, eh, it, it, we should let me live. We're gonna go now. And uh, well, the other guy this says, says you could have been nicer to my friend about that because the one guy's still just fucking screaming. And then the guy says that, tells his friend to shut the fuck up, put his hand over his mouth. As the guy's still trying to yell with his hand cupped, with his friend's hand cupped over his mouth. And they start going off, the one helping the other with the bad leg. Well, now bad leg. And then the third guy that was being, was being held up by Ghost kind of just goes right behind him. And he like sidesteps around, goes with his hands still up, and is still facing goes like walking backwards for a few steps, and then he turns around and starts walking with his friends. Well, they're moving as fast as they can, but they, you know, they're kind of like fast walking, I guess, since they can't really run since their friend's got a injured leg. And you guys did notice that they had the uh, Xanathar symbol on them, so you guys can see already. 
it, it was easy to notice. We were already told that they were Xanathar's guys. Yeah, and you guys did confirm it. You wouldn't even have to roll for that, and you guys noticed that during the interaction. So. Okay, guys. Um, so, uh, we're coming up on time. Is there anything else you guys wanted to do? Or did you guys want to uh, inform the guild and then head back and tend your bar? So probably inform and then take a long rest and prepare for, for next week's. Did, um, so by now it's been at least, what, a week, right? Or maybe a little more. I think it was a week the last time, and then there's been a few more days now, of course, because it's been three days or so for the, um, of time. So has Jarlaxle paid us out yet? Yeah. So, um, again, unless you guys went to go pick it up, then the gold is not actually physically in your possession, but it is waiting at a place that it tells you you know, he told you where the guys, where the place is, uh, and that it's waiting there for you guys. And you can, you know, if you need to store it there for a little while, you can. But he says he, you know, prefer if you guys can get your stuff out of there so we can store other shit there. But your money is waiting for you. Yes, uh, Shine came by to tell you guys. All right. There so are, the know, few days while you're the uh, so. the initial payout. This is session number nineteen. The initial payout was was thirty three. You know, three 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 each. And then it was fifteen thousand each uh, after it was forty five thousand total, but to split amongst three of us uh, after we get the vault open, so each of us have another fifteen thousand in gold plus whatever you had already. Yeah. So. So I'm gonna go ahead and update my sheet then. I had four thousand three hundred and thirty three stored, so it'll be nineteen thousand seven hundred thirty three now. So add fourteen thousand to the. Uh, add fifteen thousand. Yeah, add fifteen. 15. Yeah, add 15 to whatever you have right now. And I see not a single penny donated to charity so far. So yeah, you guys are. Just as yeah. the rest. I don't know how the tax write-off process works in Waterdeep, so I doubt it's going to yeah. be worth donating. Talk to Jarlax, so maybe you can get that shit figured out for you. I think what I want to do then, because um, I don't know what the prices will be, but I mean, I have a generality based on, on what they, you know, uh, the books say, but... Um, just be, you know, we don't even actually need to go through this. We can hand wave it, but I want to buy at least two, maybe three immovable rods, which are, I think like uncommon, they might be rare. Um, but I want to buy some immovable rods, uh, at least two, maybe three, um, from, uh, uh, God damn it. Um, the guy, the freaking what's his name? I was thinking Fredginald, but that's, that was my guy from, uh, from balance. Del. Uh, Dell, there we go. Yeah. Uh, and also, I want a cloak of displacement. Okay. So I wanted to try to find those so that I can buy them. Okay. Oh, and see if he has those earrings in yet. Oh, the rocky talky type. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good idea. We might because if especially so. Uh, also, side note, G. Um, is this was this it was this the last of the side missions for for Dragon Heist? Like we go into Mad. No, you guys actually each still have one. Uh, there's one of them that I'll probably keep in there, uh, and uh, I'll just change it slightly. Uh, but there's two for sure. Um, three. Well, I mean, there would be one each, but some changes during the story had made one of them. Uh, I'll have to change it to make it still a little quest, I guess, because it was just mostly a social kind of thing. But there, you guys still have one more each, though, yes. Okay. All right, so we have a couple more sessions then of... Uh, of um... Dragon Heist, and then we'll start Mad Mage. I have the maps ready, mostly ready. Uh, there, there was a couple of different artists that made some, and they're not. None of them are very good, uh, but I don't want to look over them because I don't want it spoiled. So I'm just going to send you all of them, and then you pick out which ones you like, and I'll and I'll buy the, the set that you like. Okay, cool. um, thank you. So, but anyways, those are the things that I so write those down, and then you know maybe next week or whatever we can check in to see if Dell is uh, has picked those up. Okay. Taco, anything you want to uh, you know put in a request for? Not at this time. I was actually thinking about doing some room upgrades and uh, structural upgrades, but uh, I need to kind of think about that a little bit. Cool. All right, guys, and we'll say, uh, you know, during the downtime and stuff that you guys went over to talk to Dell, uh, or we could even just, you know, start there, start there on the next session or whatever. But uh, yeah, so that way, keep an eye out for it. So cloak of displacement and a movable rod, right, G? Yeah, but I want two to three immovable rods, depending on price. There may be some more things, but those are the things that I want, at least for now, with cloak and displacement, and then those. 
uh, utility type items because I, I mean, meta wise, we don't know that we're going to be going into a giant mega dungeon, of course. Uh, but um, you know, those are things that that I'll, I'll want him to be looking for before we do go down. Okay. So you know, I mean, we could always put that in later. It doesn't matter. I just wanted to, to have that uh, you know on on your head so that you could find. Cool. Yeah, and then the uh, um, long distance talking things. Cool guys. Yeah. Cool. All right, guys. That was fun. All right. See you next Sunday. Bye, guys. Yep. Later, everybody.